All right, got a few people joining here on this Sunday morning. It is November the 29th. Hope everyone's still enjoying their Thanksgiving weekend, eating those leftovers. This is probably the last day for leftovers, let's be honest. From Thursday, can't keep much longer than today. Um, we got a lot of news to talk about in the world of the Miami Dolphins right now as it's a bit of a mess. It is a bit of a mess as there's a lot happening with the Miami Dolphins, let's start off with the big news from this morning, the big story um, that came from the NFL Network that the thumb injury to Tua Tungavailoa's throwing hand might cause him to miss multiple weeks. It's expected, you know, he won't start um, this afternoon. He is listed as doubtful, and from all reports, since they called up Reed Sinet from the practice squad to be the number two quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick will start this afternoon versus the Jets. Meaning Tua Tungavailoa will most likely be inactive, but the but the report from the NFL Network that his thumb injury um, could could the keyword cause him to miss multiple weeks is concerning because right now, you know, um, on Tuesday we're going to be in the month of December and the quarterback spot, the quarterback situation is not one where you want to keep rotating guys in and out here at the end of the season. It's just it's not viable. It doesn't make sense. Um, and you have to have some continuity at the quarterback spot here, heading into the stretch run, heading into a playoff chase, and all that stuff. So I do think if this is an injury, now look, if two is able to come back next week and play, great, put him back there. He shouldn't lose his job to an injury. But if this is an injury that's going to linger for more than one week, um, and he's going to miss, we, you know, more than one week, let's just say, um, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick stays at the quarterback spot. And when he does come back and he is healthy enough to return to as a number two quarterback, it's just you can't have a quarterback carousel like this um, heading into the final month of the season. It, it ju- it, it's not feasible. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not fair to the rest of the players on the team. It's not fair to the offense. So I think um, we'll see what happens with two and his thumb. But if this is a multiple week injury, I think Fitzpatrick, you just let him start the rest of the year and you start fresh with Tua in 2021 <clears throat> because it's just too much. It's just, it's too much, the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it's not fair to everyone else on the team. Now, they got a big game today against the Jets, and you might say, Mike, how is this a big game? The Jets stink. Yeah, they stink, but this game for the Miami Dolphins, this is essentially, look, they're in a spot right now, the Miami Dolphins, where any bad loss pretty much ends their season. Because, you know, the AFC playoff race is so tight, and there's so many teams fighting for just, you know, a few spots left. Um, you can't lose a game like this to the Jets. You lose a game like this to the Jets, you know, you can kiss the playoffs goodbye, and that's what will happen here. The Jets are a mess, but uh, they're a mess, but they've actually been playing well the past three or four weeks. And here's what they've done. For those of you who have not paying attention, and... Also, remember, last year, the Jets, I think they won like five out of their last eight games or five out of their last six or seven games. They ended last year hot, and right now, I'm not saying they're getting hot because they're obviously losing them all, but home, and and they're home again this week. Uh, Three or four weeks ago, when they played the Buffalo Bills, they lost 18-10. to They did not let the high-powered Bills offense score a touchdown. It was six field goals. They lost 18-10. to They probably should have won that game. They got blown out by the Chiefs. I'm not going to count that one. Then they lost at home to the Patriots on Monday night, 30-27. to The fact they scored 27 points is a minor miracle. And they had the lead up until the final moments of that game. They should have won that game. Chargers last week, they lost 34-28. to They're in these games. And they're not getting blown out like they were early in the season. And if this is a game where the Miami Dolphins come out and play like they did last week against the Broncos, they might be in for a rude awakening. They might be. I am not confident at all that Miami's going to have a walk in the park here today against the lowly Jets. I think this game scares the hell out of me. I think the Jets are sneaky right now. They don't want to go in 16. You talk to a lot of players on that team, they're now going public saying they don't want to be remembered as an 0-16 team. I just think... Um, Jets at home, 1 o'clock game. you got the Miami Dolphins, you know, switching quarterbacks now, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. they got, you know, injuries on the offensive line. Um, offensive line didn't play well last week. And obviously, you know, they're down to the third string running back Miami. Skill position players, a wide receiver, aren't so hot. 
This is a recipe for a close game. And I think it will be a close game. The line, let me check the line. It's uh, from Las Vegas here. The line hasn't moved a point all week. It opened up with Miami minus 7. It is still Miami minus 7. There is, you know, pretty much even money being bet in this game the entire week. Um, you know, money going on each side. So that hasn't budged at all. I think for the Dolphins, the key. And there's a few things here. First off, for the Jets, they're going to be starting Sam Darnold, the quarterback. That will be interesting. He hasn't played in a few weeks. Um, he's rather an upgrade. He's rather an upgrade over Flacco. So there's that. And plus, the Jets do finally, for like one of the first times all year, have all their wide receivers back healthy. <laughs> they had wide receivers hurt all year. They got their full complement of wide receivers healthy for once. So something to keep an eye on there. Um... I think for the Miami Dolphins, a couple things here. They're going to have to try and run the ball. Now, I know they they don't have any quality running backs on the roster right now. they got guys like Patrick Laird, nice player. Matt Breida, who's just been awful this year. Um, Washington, who's just been with the team a few weeks. Some, they're going to have to try. They can't let Fitzpatrick drop back and pass 40, 45 times. If they do, he will turn it over. We know that. He is not that type of player. So try and run the ball. Even if it doesn't work, they have to try. They have to, because if they don't, it's just going to be a long day. Um, and then, obviously, some of these other wide receivers are going to have to try and get open. Uh, right now, these wide receivers, including Parker, I hate to say it, have, they get no separation. Absolutely no separation at all. And I don't know if it's, you know, if they have to call other type of plays to sort of scheme them open, or if they just have to work harder to get open. Because right now, these wide receivers can't get open, and... It's going to be a challenge. If this game is going to be a challenge, I think it's going to be a dogfight. I hope I'm wrong. I always hope I'm wrong when I say stuff like this. But I think it's going to be a dogfight, and I think the Jets are going to hang around. And for the Miami Dolphins, a couple things. Number one, control the line of scrimmage. Last week, the Broncos pushed the Miami Dolphins around like a rag doll on both sides of the ball. Both sides. So, you know, hopefully with Christian Wilkins back, that should help some. But they're going to have to get after Sam Darnold, get a pass rush going. And they're also... Going to have to, on the offensive line, like I said, attempt to run the ball some and get some running game going of some sort. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just, you know, just has to be enough. Because I have no faith in any of the running backs at all right now, and that's a big concern. But if the offensive line can at least, you know, protect Fitzpatrick and also give a little bit of a running game. I mean, 60, 70 yards, is that asking too much? I don't think so. I don't think so. But that's what they have to do. They can't, you know, once again, can't let Fitzpatrick drop back 40, 45 times and just throw it all day because he will turn it over. And that will be a very bad day. Um, so hopefully, I know they shut out the Jets last time they played, but Flacco, he was a quarterback and he was brutal. And the Jets had no weapons at wide receiver. That's not going to be the case today. Sam Darnold, quarterback, like I said. Wide receivers, they're all healthy for the first time all year, I think. So they're going to have a full complement here in the passing game to challenge Miami, uh, unlike they did last time. So we'll see. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I really do. I think it's going to come down to a field goal either way. I don't see Miami running away with this. Again, hope I'm wrong. Um, you know, for fantasy purposes, I would like to talk about fantasy purposes. I think with Fitzpatrick in the lineup, Parker and Gasecki will be more involved in the offense, uh, especially the tight end. So if you got those guys, you probably want to throw them out there. I wouldn't touch any of the Miami running backs. I think they're all just a hot mess right now. I wouldn't touch any of them. I know they're going to, you know, some people are going to say, you got to play Matt Breida. He's a, he, he's like the last one standing. No, he's, he's just not any good. Um, I wouldn't start him at all. On defense, if you want to start Miami on defense, you could roll the dice. You could roll the dice because it, it is Adam Gase. <laughs> it is the Jets. So you can clearly roll the dice there and take a shot. Um, but I'd be very careful, though, because I think, like I said, the Jets, the past few weeks, um, last week lost 34-28 to the Chargers, lost 30-27 to to the Patriots, 18-10 to the Bills. Take out that game against the Chiefs. They're hanging around. They're hanging around. Um, they're not the same Jets that Miami faced just, like, a, uh, what, five weeks ago? Uh, it's not that same Jets team. They're a little bit different now. They're a little bit... More organized, let's just say. Um, but overall, it's going to be a close game. And, you know, the thing with Tua Tunga by Loa, for those of you just joining late who might have missed the open here of the show, it's 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 unfortunate because 
you know, we're heading into the final month of the year. And it's not the time where you can, you know, have quarterbacks go in and out of the lineup week in, week out, week in, week out. And I do think if this is more than just this week, and from the reports from the NFL Network, it sounds like it will be more than just this week. I think Tua won't get a starting job back the rest of this year. I think you just keep Fitzpatrick out there, play out the rest of this year, and then start fresh with him in 2021. The quarterback carousel cannot continue for another month when you're trying to get a playoff spot, even trying to win the AFC East. I and mean, come on, trying to win the AFC East. Because once again, it, they're only one game back from tying the Bills. Even the Bills, yes, the Bills have all the tiebreakers, which makes this very much a challenge. But, you know, they're only one game back. And, you know, you can't you can't try to win that by going back and forth and back and forth with Patrick and Tua. It's not fair to the rest of the players on the team. It's not fair to... Um, the offensive players in particular who, you know, have to, you know, kind of adjust their game every time there's a quarterback change. So we'll see. And I just got word here that it is official. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to start today. I mean, we all sort of knew it, but I just got an alert here on my phone. It is official, 100% Fitzpatrick. will start uh, and be under center here for the Dolphins today against the Jets. So that is uh, set in stone, as they say. But overall... I think this is going to be a close game. Uh, MetLife Takeover Day. This is a MetLife Takeover. There is going to be an interactive MetLife Takeover, which everyone can join for free. You can't beat free. So everyone, be sure to go to the website, dollfansnyc.com, D-O-L-F-A-N-S-N-Y-C.com. Go to dollfansnyc.com. There's going to be a link. You can join it via Zoom. Everyone from around the globe can participate from the comfort of their own home this year on their sofa. So that's a big deal. So MetLife Takeover, obviously, each year at MetLife Stadium, big event, big tailgate, fans from around the world go. It's almost like a Miami Dolphins convention, I like to say. Um, This year it's a virtual event. Okay, sorry about that, got a call. Um, You know, so everyone participate with that. And also, last thing here, and I'll wrap up, Manscaped.com. Go to Manscaped.com. Buy your Christmas gifts, tons of Black Friday sales. Use the promo code Dolphins Talk, Dolphins Talk, and you save 25% um, and get free shipping. And they ship to Europe, Canada, Australia, United States, everywhere. So, everyone, for your Black Friday sales, go there. And if you're going to buy anything from the website Fanatics, use the link on our website, dolphinstalk.com. Click there just to get on the page for. Fanatics and buy all your stuff there. Helps us out a little bit. I'm getting a phone call I gotta take. Gonna have to end this call. Everyone, enjoy today's game and we'll talk to you again after a while.